Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Habits and Humor podcast. I'm so excited to talk about today's topic. Uh, it's one of my very favorite things to talk about, and it is uh, one of the things that I think so many of us are either missing or misunderstand. And once you really come to understand this concept, it is so incredibly valuable in the process toward whatever progress you're working on, whether you're working on health or business or family or faith, whatever it is that you want to improve in your life, this one thing will help you. And the way we're going to present it today is, of course, with a hilarious and embarrassing story. Today's topic is support, how to support other people. People are often saying like, oh, I'm here to support you or tell me how I can support you, things like that. What does that even mean? <laughs> how do we really support somebody? How do we really get support from someone or offer that? What does that even look like? Let me tell you a story about an Olympian. This is my claim to fame that I am friends with Stacy Dragila. I don't know if you know who Stacy Dragila is, but she is what I consider to be like the goddess of pole vault. So in college, I walked onto the track team as a pole vaulter and I absolutely immediately fell in love with the sport. I'd never done it in high school and uh, maybe once or twice is all because we didn't have a coach and I always wanted to. So when I had a friend in college that had done it, he was like, Hey, the coach at Idaho state, I went to Idaho state university. And he's like, the coach at Idaho state is like world renowned pole vault coach. You, if you're going to do pole vault, you need to learn it from him. Dave Nielsen is his name and he's absolutely phenomenal. So I came to practice with my friend one day and um, I just went to see, just see what this is all about. And absolutely, totally fell in love with it. It was so exhilarating, so fun and such a different way to move my body. I've told you guys before how I'm obsessed with, with the body and moving my body and pushing my body to new levels. And this was definitely one of those experiences where I got to really push my body in a new way. And so this, the teammates were awesome and they just welcomed me right on. And I was like, well, I got to do this. And so I walked on and the coach was phenomenal. Like truly he was amazing. Dave is just next level. He's brilliant and so, so good at what he does. And he really taught me the immediate body, body mechanics of how to do the sport properly. It wasn't about numbers. It wasn't about PRs. It wasn't about records. It was about how do you do this well? from day one. And I so, so appreciate that. So from day one, I get into this pole vault sport with form in mind and, and proper, um, all of this stuff. And it was so interesting how quickly you're able to progress when you do things right. <laughs> and so here we are, and I'm learning the sport. And like I said, I'm a total beginner and I've been doing it for about two weeks is all I'd come to practice maybe, you know, 10, 10 times. And he's uh, coach Nielsen comes to me and he's like, Hey, we have this event coming up, this first um, meet, this first event, and uh, we, we signed you up to go with us. And I'm like, oh, cool. There's going to be a track meet. You know, I get to, I get to compete. And he's like, and it's called World Pole Vault Summit. <laughs> you guys, okay, let me just give you a little background on what World Pole Vault Summit is. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is the one of the top competitions in the world for pole vault. And a lot of people use this event to qualify for the Olympic games. Okay. I've been doing this sport for two weeks <laughs> and he signs me up for world pole vault summit. It's in Las Vegas. And so we hop on this bus and we, we go to Las Vegas and we get there and we're pulling into our hotel and he's like, Hey, I just found out the schedule for uh, your events and everyone else on the team's events. There were 11 of us that went. And one of them, one of my teammates was actually qualifying for the Olympic trials. And so this is what he was using the event for. And this was his big moment, you know, like if, if I get this certain height at this event, then I can qualify for the Olympics. This is who my teammates were. This is how good my coach was. Anyway, so this coach, let's uh, go back to that Stacy Dragila comment I made earlier. He had coached Stacy Dragila from beginner to Olympic gold medal. You guys, she is an Olympic gold medalist and she held the world record in pole vault for a long, long time. She was one of the very first women to break the heights that she broke consistently. Like she was constantly making new records. 
constantly making amazing progress in the sport. She really just progressed women's pole vault beyond what anyone, what any athlete had done before her. She really was a pioneer in the sport. And I just absolutely love this woman. So she was an Olympic gold medalist. And then, um, and she had been coached by my coach. He had coached her from a beginner to Olympic gold medalist. And so that's why my, my friend had told me like, you got to get coached from this guy. Cause he knows what he's doing. So I just love this Stacy Jugula and I love the sport. I'm really getting into pole vault and all of this. And we show up at this pole vault summit and the energy in these buildings, it was such a huge uh, event. It was held at like eight different buildings in Las Vegas. This is how big this was eight different buildings with, you know, seven or eight pole vault pits in each one. So we're talking like hundreds of athletes that are doing the event all at the same time. Thousands of athletes that come from all over the world to compete here. And little old me, <laughs> I've been doing this sport for two weeks and this is my very first track meet. <laughs> oh my word, talk about being, um, feeling a little bit of overwhelm. And so I felt totally unqualified, but I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm committed. I want to compete. This is going to be great. So I show up to the event and there is an energy here, just a buzz of people who are obviously passionate about their sport. They are moving their bodies in incredible and amazing ways and just so such an incredible vibe in this room so we show up there and i'm just in awe watching all of these incredible athletes doing amazing things and you know we got the support of my teammates and um, all of my teammates were not beginners they were all very very good and so for to even just be associated with the team that i was associated with was a privilege and they were just really, really good to me. They were great friends. And we hung out in Las Vegas. You know, we had a whole day before the event. And so we hung out in Las Vegas and we just got to be there in that cool city. And we stayed right on the strip. And so we were right in the middle of all the action. And <laughs> so the night my coach comes to me and he's like, hey, I just got the event schedule and you are scheduled to compete at the exact, si exact same time as Paul, who is the Olympian who is going out for the Olympics in a different building. And he's like, I have to go with Paul. This is his big shot. I'm not going to be able to coach you. And I'm like, uh, yeah, clearly <laughs> you need to be with him. And I will just go and embarrass myself over here all alone. <laughs> no one, no one needs to see what's about to happen in my event. <laughs> so I was kind of relieved, like, oh, good. you not even coach has to see this first disaster of, a, of my first attempt to clear any bar. This is the very first bar I've ever cleared. And it's at World Pole Vault Summit. So I'm, I'm relieved and I'm like, good, good, good. I get to go all by myself and no one has to be witness here. And he's like, no, 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 I'm not sending you by yourself. I'm flying in a coach to help you. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what do you mean you're flying in a coach to help me? I'm, a, I'm like, I'm a nobody here. Like, coach, you don't need to put any effort into what's about to happen for me. Just go ahead and stay with the team. I'll go compete for 20 minutes and I'll come find you when I'm done. And he's like, no, 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 I would not do that to you. Like I said, really good coach, just amazing person. So he's like, I, I'm flying in a coach to help you and she'll be here in the morning. And I'm like, okay, do I know her? And she's like, and he goes, it's Stacy Dragila. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, my head just exploded. Like you're trying to play it cool, but I did not play it cool. I was like, I started to laugh because I thought he was kidding first. And I'm like, oh, that's hilarious coach. And he's like, she'll be here in the morning. She'll be here at nine o'clock. This is her room number. If you'll just meet her there, she'll get you to where you need to go. I'm like, coach, you're serious right now? Are you kidding me? And he's like, no, of course I'm not kidding you. This is serious. I'm flying in Stacy. She's one of my, you know, good. She's one of my athletes. She's one of my great friends. We have a great relationship. She'll do. She's happy to offer a favor when I ask her for a favor. I'm like, what? Why would you ask her for this favor? <laughs> so, oh my word. I'm just, I was feeling um, unqualified before, but now I'm being coached by like the goddess of pole vault, who is an Olympic gold medalist. She's coming to coach me on my very first jump of my life. Oh my word. I've never felt so immediately embarrassed in my life. I hadn't even done anything yet. So I was like totally panicked all night long. This is, he had told me this at like 6 PM and I was supposed to meet her at 9 AM the next morning. So for a solid, whatever that is, 18 hours, 16 hours, I was just like flipping out. Oh my heck. I just couldn't even believe it. And I was like, there's no way like for, he, he's gotta be kidding me. He's gotta be pulling my leg. So I wake up in the morning and I'm like excited for my event. I'm excited to compete, but I'm straight up terrified that he was telling the truth. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, um, 
am I really going to go to this room and meet Stacy Dragila? Be Stacy Dragila. And not only am I going to meet her and like fangirl big time, like ask her for an autograph, she's then going to transport me to my event and coach me. Me, just me. None of the other athletes are going to the building I'm going to because they're all on the next level and they go to the next event center. I'm in the beginner event center. And they're all beyond that. So not even any of my teammates are coming with me. Just me and Stacy Dragila. Oh my word. So I'm totally like, I just remember the feeling walking down the hallway in that hotel. Like my heart rate was like a thousand in my feet. I felt like, oh my word. It just felt like the whole world was just closing in on me. And I just was like a massive panic attack ready to happen. But I was playing it cool and I was playing it tough. And I was like, all right. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to meet her. I'm going to make a great first impression. She's going to coach me. This is going to be the greatest thing ever. And I knock on the door. She, Stacy Jagila, opens the door. Coach was telling the truth. She really did fly in and she really was there to meet me, to coach me. I just, oh my gosh, I still can't even believe this happened. So she opens the door and she's like, hey, I'm Stacy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're Stacy. I'm like, um, I'm Susie, like little old me, you know, just like feeling. Oh, it was amazing. Just to meet one of your heroes is, oh man, such an experience. So I was just grateful to be in the room with her. And so she's like, yeah, I'm really excited to coach you. And she was legitimately, authentically excited to be there. I mean, this is how great this woman is. She's amazing at her sport, obviously, but she is such a good person because this person, this Dave Nelson called her and asked her to coach a beginner. Like she, he didn't ask her to take me to the Olympic trials event. He didn't ask her to take me to the crazy stuff where, you know, all the impressive people and all of the important things were going to happen. He asked her to coach me at the beginner event. And she said, yes, she said, yes, I couldn't even believe it. No, they're coming here. They'll be here in just a second. Sorry, I'm talking to my kiddos. Anyway, so she's there to coach me and I meet her and it's this whole thing. And Dave's like, hey, here's your, here's your car. You guys are, here's your bus. We'll, we'll take you over to your event center because you got to have a bus because you got to have poles and the poles are, you know, 13, 14 feet long. So they drive us over there, just me and Stacy and my little bag of poles. <laughs> and I still, I'm just like, this can't be real. Like this is, this is ridiculous. And so at this point I start to feel a little bit, not a little bit, completely and totally embarrassed. And I'm starting to feel small and I'm starting to tell myself like to play small, like, okay, this is embarrassing for her. She's going to be embarrassed that she's walking around with a beginner. And then she's going to be embarrassed that I am terrible at the sport. Like when I miss the beginner bar, she's just going to be like, Oh my word. Like I can't be associated with this athlete. And so I was totally afraid that she was just going to be, you know, embarrassed to be my coach. And so I started to feel really, um, a lot of self-doubt, hugely, uh, a ton of self-doubt, like very weighty weight. It just felt like there was a weight on my shoulders of you're not good enough. You're not good enough to be here. You should, you don't deserve this coach. And I was panicking. And so we walk into the event center and there's just, like I said, that buzz, it was back. All these athletes in there warming up and moving and jumping and doing all of this crazy, incredible things with their bodies. So I walk in there with my bag of poles and, and Stacy and we're, you know, going over to the, the place where I'm supposed to be the pit and the runway that I'm supposed to meet at. And as we walk in, just people surround her. They know who she is. She's a huge celebrity in this world. She's signing autographs. She's doing all this stuff. And I just, I'm like, okay, good. I'm just going to leave. I'm going to go over to my event. She's going to be over here signing autographs and, and she'll just ignore me. And she won't even have to watch what's about to go down, but no immediately she's like, Hey, I'm here to coach. I'm, I'm going to have a, a session later between this time and this time at this place. If you guys want to come for autographs, things like that, that's great. We'll do it then. But right now I'm here to coach. I appreciate it. I'm happy to see you guys. And I can't wait to see y'all jump. And she turns around, leaves this giant group of people and comes with me. Oh my word. All of a sudden that weight, that feeling of she's going to be so embarrassed to be with me just lifts this woman, no matter how beginner I was, and I'm sure my coach told her she's never competed before. She knew, she knew I was a beginner, but she still was on my team. She was right there with me. She's like, all right, let's get you to your event. Let's get you warmed up all this stuff. So I'm starting to warm up and I'm running down, you know, doing my, my drills and things like that to get warmed up. And people are still coming over and talking to her and she's, you know, do, doing her thing and just, just 
just the nicest woman. She is so great. She's just happy, unbelievable person. It was such a gift to just be around her. So the event begins and they call my name and they're like, hey, or they're like, Stoddard, you're on deck. And Stacy's like, hey, you ready? And I'm like, tell me what to do, Stacy. Tell me what to do. And she's like, you already know what to do. Just go and do it. She just looks me right in the eye and she's like, you already know what to do. Just do it. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm totally freaked out more than just the event itself. I'm freaked out that I have to do it in front of Stacy Dragila. And so I'm like, okay, I can't disappoint her. I can't let her down. I have to do this. I have to do it well. I have to be perfect. I have to be the best because I'm, she's my coach. I have to, you know, give, give her a good reputation. And so I run down the runway and I plant my pole and I leave the ground and I nail the bar, just absolutely crush it. First thing, just uh, not even close. It was not even close to clearing it. Just total disaster. Immediately, the first thought in my head is, what are you doing here? Like, who are you? You don't belong. You're not good enough. Why are you here? And so I almost was afraid to even catch her eye, but there she was. She just came right up to the mat and she's standing there and she's like, hey, that's fine. That's just your first jump. Get back in line. Let's go again. And she was not shaken by this at all. Like, not at all. And so then I was gaining a little confidence from her confidence. And so I'm like, all right, let's go. So I come back to the runway. They call my name again. I'm back on <clears throat> for my second attempt. If you don't know uh, much about pole vault, you get three attempts at each bar height. And if you clear the bar, then you can move on to the next height. If you miss all three attempts at the whatever height the bar is at, you're out. You get three attempts at each bar height. And if you pass, you go on to the next height. If you miss, then you're out. So I'd already missed one. I have two attempts left at this height. And it was eight foot six. Stacy's record is over 14 feet, you guys. Like more than double what I was doing. It's just, oh my gosh, it's so insane. So she's there and she's coaching me and she's like, okay, hey, second attempt. You know, this is what you need to adjust. Just make sure, make your adjustments and go for it. Commit, be fully committed. And um, she's like, just go for it. This is, this is attempt number two. Don't stress, don't be, just get out of your head and just go. And so I get up and I'm uh, ready to go and I plant my pole and I clear the bar, but then my pole comes back with me and I hit the bar off with my pole. So I had cleared the bar, but I still didn't make it because I made another mistake. And so rather and again, once again, that self-doubt comes to me and it's like, okay, I am um, a failure. I'm embarrassed. Like, so I, I'm trying to look up her record. Hang on one second. I'll tell you what her actual pole vault record is. Her pole vault record is 14 feet, 11 inches. <laughs> oh no, 15 feet, 10 inches. Oh my gosh, 15 feet, 10 inches. So it really was double what I was doing at this moment. <laughs> so I'm on the bar or I'm on the mat and I'm like, okay, hey, I have one more attempt at this height. And if I don't clear this height, I will no height at this event, which means I'm not going to clear any single bar. I can't be coached by an Olympic gold medalist and not clear a bar. So I go up there and I plant as hard as I can and I swing and I do the whole thing and I clear the bar. And I was so excited. And immediately I think to myself like, okay, for a second there, I was excited. And I was like, awesome, I just cleared the bar. But then my self-doubt came in and it was like, yeah, but you only cleared a bar that was eight foot six. Maybe you should not be too excited about this, about this. And so then I started to be like, okay, it was nothing. It was no big deal. I just cleared one height. Immediately, this sound rings out of my ears. And above us, there's this arena um, of high like bleachers that are about 10 feet above my head. And uh, there I could hear people cheering. And I look up there and all of my teammates are there. All of my teammates are there cheering for me. Little old me clearing eight foot six. Like it was just such an unbelievable experience. And so then I turn around and Stacy's there. She's cheering for me. Like just, just to be supportive in succeeding at something so, so small on this level was life-changing. And so I turn around and I go back and I go on to clear the next height. And then I missed at the third height. And so, um, I, I cleared, you know, I made a personal record because I had no record. So I got myself a personal record and uh, nine foot or nine feet. And it was just an unbelievable experience that whole day. Stacy Dragila was my coach. She was happy for me. She celebrated all of my little tiny wins and she gave me permission to celebrate myself. She wanted me to be excited. She wanted me to celebrate. And she wanted me to see how amazing it was what I was doing. She didn't want me to compare myself to the other athletes in the room that I was constantly comparing myself to. Even on the next pit over, they were clearing like 11 feet. All of my room or all of my teammates that day cleared over 11 feet, you guys. <laughs> I cleared eight foot 
six and then nine feet. So if I was comparing myself to them, it would have felt like, okay, this really was an insignificant accomplishment. But that was not what Stacy was doing. That is not the lesson I learned this day. Stacy Dragila told me, or taught me this day, your successes are yours. No matter what anyone else is doing, it does not matter. When you succeed, celebrate that you succeeded. No matter how big, no matter how small, celebrate your own successes and stop comparing yourself to other people because their successes are not yours and your successes are not theirs. They're two incredibly different things. You can't compare apples to oranges. Your successes are yours. And that was a lesson I learned from Stacey. She's like, you need to celebrate. And then all day long, she, we, I, we got to go to all the events together because I was done competing early in the morning and I got to see all of my uh, roommates and, or my teammates. And Paul did qualify for, for the Olympics. He cleared over 17 feet that day. It was unbelievable to just be associated with these people. But the two valuable lessons I learned that day were, number one, celebrate yourself. Give yourself permission to really be excited. Don't play small because your accomplishments are small compared to somebody else's. If your accomplishments are something that you were working for, something that maybe you haven't done before, something new for you, or even something you have done before, but something you wanted to do again. If you set yourself a goal and you accomplished it, it's a big deal. Celebrate it like it's a big deal because it absolutely is. And the next lesson I learned from Stacy was how to support other people. At the beginning of this episode, I talked about how support will change your pathway to progress, whatever it is that you're working on. That day, if, after I had missed the first bar, if I had been there alone, I don't know what would have happened in my head. I don't know if I would have been like, I can still clear this. I can still do this. Or if I would have been like, mm, maybe I don't deserve to be here. It could have gone either way. I have no idea. But because I had a support system there who celebrated, who was excited for me, who told me to be excited for me. Because I had that support system, I believed in myself. And not only did I keep trying, I failed twice when I succeeded the third time. And then I went back and I succeeded again on the next level. I cleared nine feet that day. It was unbelievable. It was such an exciting time to try something new, to experience something I had never done in my entire life. And to be able to have the support there that pushed me to push myself. That's the key right there. Support is someone who will push you to do the things that you're not sure if you can do by yourself. That's such a valuable piece to the progress puzzle. Whatever it is that you're working on. When people say, I'm here to support you, know who those people are who can actually support you the way that you need. For me that day, I needed someone to support me in a way that told my self-doubt to go away because it was very strong and very present that day. But because I had a support team there who didn't care how my, how my accomplishments compared to anybody else's, they were there for me and they were there to be excited at whatever I did. It did not matter if I succeeded or failed. I think if I had missed all three heights at that first one, Stacy still would have been excited to have been my coach there. She would have had great feedback on what I can work on and what I can improve. But she was just absolutely such a great support. And my teammates that were there cheering for me on those high up bleachers, it was such a phenomenal experience. This is what I want for you guys. Whatever it is that you're working on, I want you to practice these two things. Often I have you walk away with three things, but today we're going to walk away with two. Support yourself, cheer for yourself, and celebrate your accomplishments. I don't care how big they are. I don't care how small they are. If it's something you set out to do and you did it, celebrate it. Take time to cheer for yourself because that is what is going to motivate you to do more. I'll give you a specific example with health on this. If you set a goal to do something with your exercise, let's say that you want to be able to lift a certain amount of weight. I'm going to be able to bench press you know, 150 pounds. As soon as you get to that 150 pounds and you tell yourself, actually, let's go 160. What did you just do? What happened is when you got to 150 and then you moved the benchmark, what that told you, what that sent, you sent a signal to yourself that says, hey, we set a goal to get to 150. And when we got there, it wasn't good enough. What does that tell you? That tells you that even if you achieve the things that you set out to achieve, it's not going to be good enough. So why try? 
This is the opposite of motivation. This is the killer of motivation. This sort of mindset, this sort of just move the benchmark and don't take time to pay attention to where we are. However, the opposite will also happen if you take time to celebrate. So let's say we set the same goal. I'm going to bench press 150 pounds. When you get to 120 pounds, celebrate. And you throw yourself a big party and you call your best friend and you say, hey, I got to 120 today. I'm really, really excited about this. And they cheer for you and they support you. Guess what that does? That motivates you from within to do more. When you celebrate the small things, the big things become a huge flipping deal. So you celebrate the little thing. We got to 120. That's awesome. Guess what? Now I'm motivated to get to 125. You get to 125. Now I'm motivated to get to 130. Whatever it is that you're working on, if you celebrate as you go, instead of waiting until the end, celebrate as you go, you will motivate yourself to go further, faster, and to enjoy the process. That is such a valuable piece, healthy and happy. I want you to be able to work toward whatever it is in your life that you want to work toward and enjoy it as you go. Celebrate yourself. And part number two, habit number two, is to celebrate other people. Coveting, being jealous, and all of those things in the world, comparison, all of that out there, it's a difficult battle to fight. I'm not going to tell you these things are just silly and you should just get over them. Like, no, they're absolutely present and you should be aware of them, but also be aware of this. There's enough success to go around. When someone else succeeds, celebrate them. Was my accomplishment anything big in comparison to Stacey Dragila? Absolutely not. She did not care. She was legitimately and fully excited for me because this was a big deal for me. It had nothing to do with her. This was not a big deal for her. This was probably sort of inconvenient for her, (laughs) but she didn't even care. She was there to support me and she absolutely did. She was such a powerful example to me of how celebrating someone else can be so, so uplifting. Without her there, without her enthusiasm and her excitement for my little achievements, I'm not sure if I would have achieved anything that day. But because she was there, I was able to achieve amazing things for myself. I was able to accomplish two things that I had never done in my whole entire life. It was unbelievable. And I totally attribute that to the fact that I had an amazing support team. My teammates were there supporting me and my fabulous and amazing gold medalist, Stacy Dragila coach was there supporting me. It was such an incredible experience and such a powerful life lesson that I learned. Celebrate yourself and celebrate other people because when you celebrate them, it doesn't take anything away from you. It adds to you. It adds to you. When you realize that when you offer that lift and that support for somebody else, it also lifts and supports you. It's amazing how this full, this comes full circle every single time. Notice what other people are doing. Share it. Tell them when you see someone that's doing something awesome, give them a compliment, verbalize it, speak it to them and let them know that you noticed that they're doing something great. How many times have you received an unexpected compliment and it just lifted your spirits? It's such a powerful thing to be able to do. So celebrate yourself, celebrate other people. Those are your habits for this week. If you find yourself in a place where you don't know if you have that support system, if you find yourself in a place where you want to celebrate yourself, but you're struggling with that, or if you just need that support, that right support, the people who understand what you're going through and what you're doing and are there to truly support you. If health is that journey, if that's what you're working towards, something in your health life, and you want that support, you want to be able to celebrate yourself and you want to be part of a group that you know will push your, to push you to push yourself. That's what healthy and happy is. I have a 60 day healthy habits program that will help you not only to transform your health, to transform your habits, but also to transform the way you see yourself because you're able to believe in yourself. You're able to celebrate yourself and you're able to get the support you need to succeed long term. This is a 60 day program, but we make lifestyle change in here. So all the progress you make over the 60 day period will stay with you. It's unbelievable. The amount of difference that people have had in here. And it is such a powerful thing to be a part of. It's a group coaching program. So every week we get together on zoom and we support each other so that you can talk about what you're struggling with. You can talk about what you're succeeding with and get the support on both sides of that 
fence. On both sides of both success and failure, you need support. And this is the right kind of support. So if you're working toward health habits, please get in here. Go to livelifeconscious.com and click on coaching at the top of the page or send me a message at Susie B Life on any social media platform. And let's get you in here, healthy and happy. 60 days to better health habits. So that's it. The right kind of support to get you past the struggle, past the difficulty and into the success. I hope to see you guys in here and I hope this was helpful for you today. Remember those two takeaways, celebrate yourself and celebrate other people. That's the right kind of support. That is how we be there for other people. We notice what they're doing and we tell them how awesome they are. Notice what you're doing and tell yourself how awesome you are because you are amazing and you deserve to be celebrated. <laughs>